My Slovenci! My Slovenci! Let's go and welcome. You were locked on to Slovenia. Normally, we do the Locked On Mavericks podcast, and then when FIBA happens, Slovenia happens, we follow Luka Doncic all around the world and feel the love. Feel the love everywhere in Slovenia. Let's talk about some of the FIBA qualifiers that happened, the European qualifiers that happened over the weekend. So we got two games, Slovenia versus Croatia, Slovenia versus Sweden, and this is all happening in this qualifier round where um, Slovenia did qualify. Luka Doncic played, played really, really well. They qualify, they move on to the second round. And their next round will be August 25th, their next game, uh, versus Estonia, August 25th. Luka will play in that one, and then if they qualify out of that one, that's good. (laughs) Because then the next round after that is in February, and that's during the NBA season, and we don't believe that Luka will play in that one. Um, Their next group is Finland, Slovenia, Sweden, Germany, Israel, and Estonia. That's their next group that they'll be qualifying against. And all of this whole thing, if you don't know... Is they're qualifying for the, the, the Eurobasket 2023 that will happen next summer, and that will be a really huge deal. And so, uh, yeah, so that's that's the setup of all this, and that's what's happening. And it's a, it's a really big deal for Slovenia, a country of two million people. We get really they get really excited about it, really into it. Obviously, Luka Doncic, and so we cover it. We covered it last year in the Olympics and all this, and it's a super exciting time of the year for sure. It's a blast. You know, it's different than Eurobasket. You know, this is this could be a little confusing for you know some people in the states. You know, of trying to follow Luca and trying to figure out how to watch Luca's games and everything as we're all you know captured into Luca playing basketball. Especially if you're struggling through mass free agency, you're like, hey, I need to watch Luca play <laughs> basketball right now. It's like your fix. Um, but yeah, different from Eurobasket. Like. We're going to approach Eurobasket come September like their Mavs games. I am yeah. so yeah, we'll excited for for Eurobasket, and there's so many good teams. The group Dallas is in has a has a, a loaded group. France is in. I mean Dallas. I was going to say you just said Dallas. Um, <laughs> we are, we're going to cover these like their Mavericks games for sure, though. Yeah, yeah, and you know France is in their group. It's it's a lot of fun. September first through the eighteenth. That's Eurobasket. A lot of fun. If you barely remember, like for Mavs fans, if you think back to like those first like Luca days in which you were, you first you might have first heard about Luca if you didn't really follow him at Real Madrid, he really hit the scene whenever he played really well with Dragic in that two thousand seventeen Eurobasket. Dragic went off in that finals game at thirty seven, I think. Uh, which was a Eurobasket record and everything. So that was a fun 2017 Eurobasket there. But that's in September. So that's coming up like soon. And mm. that will that's great timing, you know, because that's during the lull of the NBA deep, offseason. Deep off season. You know, heading into and that should take us up until close to to media day and training camp and all of that. But what we're talking about now is the qualifiers, like you said, yeah. for t- 2023 World Cup. Luca and them had a few games and the spot they're in now with this first group, they advanced to group number two. They actually came in second in this group to Finland. Finland won this group because I was looking, I was like, well, dang, how in the crap did they (laughs) not win their group? So I went back and I looked at their previous game when they played Finland the first time and they didn't have Luca because it was there in the middle of the season. And I was like, okay, this makes sense. They lost to Finland then. So they still move on. But Finland technically won the group. And here's the crazy part. Finland played a few days ago, and they won at the buzzer by Laurie Markkinen bank shot. So if Markkinen doesn't, you know, if he didn't hit that shot, then, you know, Slovenia's win in their group. And not a ton changes. Some of you can yell at me if there is a big change oh, yeah. in that. The, the comments will be full of yelling if we're wrong about anything. So go check the comments. Please do. It. We're still we're still learning about it. So yeah. we're bound to get something wrong, but we're just excited. We're excited fans like you guys. So we're going to cover it and talk about it. But let's talk about a couple of these games that happened recently. The Mavericks. Or, God, I just did it. I just did it. You said we're going to do this. <laughs> you said Dallas eyes of the Mavericks. That Slovenia beat. So Slovenia played Croatia. In their first, um, their first round of, of Group C, in this uh, in FIBA, and uh, Slovenia won ninety seven to sixty nine. Ice, and it just this game wasn't close from the beginning. I mean, so you should know about this about this Slovenia team. Luka Doncic obviously starts. You have the the Dragic brothers, Zoran and Goran, both starting. 
You have Mike Toby making his return. You got to love Toby. Mike Toby and everybody that tweets us that says the Mavs should give Mike Toby a roster spot because, I don't know, the way that he plays in some of these games, you're kind of like, I could see it. Um, what if the Mavs are about to sign Zoran and the whole reporting all along wow. was Dragic was locked in and you're like, hey, they got the it's wrong a different dra- It's a different Dragic. Yeah. Um, but, and then on the Croatian side for, for NBA, player, NBA players, it was uh, Zubats, if it's a Zubac from the Clippers, Mario Hazonia, who was a, a high draft pick for the, the Magic a while ago, uh, and then Bojan Bogdanovic from the uh, the Utah Jazz. And they also had uh, Ante Zizic, who was a draft pick of the wow. of the Cavs a while ago. He was on, yeah. And then Dragan Bender was also on this. He played three minutes in this game. <laughs> totally, totally missed his minutes in this one. But uh, it was this was dominating just straight from the start. And Slovenia can do this. Like this team, we saw it last year, and we're seeing it in this game where – Luca just starts his attack, and then if they can start hitting some threes, and if they can, and if him and, and Dragic can just get past the point of attack like defense, it's just kind of game over because they just come, they just keep coming, they just keep coming, they keep coming. Like this first game started out, and Slovenia was up twenty five to six, or no, they're up, they're up, you know, they're twenty, they're up twenty five to six with, in like the first eight minutes of this game, and they ended the first quarter 33-8. to eight. It was just an onslaught. They play pretty solid defense. They communicate really, really well. They rotate. like They do a lot of things, and they didn't even hit a ton of threes in that first quarter. They were only two of nine from three in that first quarter. Um, Croatia had eight turnovers. They were just create like Slovenia was just creating a ton of turnovers, and they were just on fire and getting to the rim at will whenever they want. And if you can get to the rim at will, and you can against guys like you know Hazonia and Bogdanovic and even Zubats, like Luca has owned all those guys in different respects in the NBA. If you can get to the rim, Slovenia will just dominate you in every other facet of the game, and that's what happened in this game. Uh, that, that first quarter just kind of said it all because Croatia didn't really have a response. They made it at least a little bit of a game. You know, Slovenia stretched their lead in the second quarter to 27. It was 40 to 13. This game was <laughs> 40 wow. to 13 to start. He broke Boyan again. Uh, it was 40 to 13. And then like a couple minutes later, it was getting close to like a 20 point lead. And the Slovenian coach in timeout was like, everybody don't panic. Don't panic. And I was like, it's, a tw- it's still a 20 point lead. Like, why are we talking about panicking at this point? Um, the Croatian coach got a technical. Zubats was complaining like he does all the time with <laughs> different fouls. Uh, Hazonia started to catch fire a little bit in the second quarter. He had 15 points uh, in, the fir- in the first half. And then they kind of almost cut it to 10 points at halftime. And then just, you know, Luca had an answer for every single thing that they did. It just seemed like anytime, like anytime Croatia got back within 20, Luca and, and company would just pull it back to 20. And uh, they were just dominating in every facet of the game, it felt like. And the one thing I think this, this Slovenia team does really well is they just take advantage of every mistake that you do. Every missed rotation, it's a layup or it's an open three. Every turnover, it's a basket on the other end. They just take advantage of mistakes so quick, from mistakes from the other team. They just take take advantage of those mistakes so quickly, and this game was, was just complete uh, and a complete example of that. I have one big question for them that I'm so curious on: is what do they look like without Dragic? In the sense of so, I which one? So I was <laughs> Goran, because you know, I, I one of the bigger things about these qualifying games is seeing some Slovenian Mavs fans talk about you know, how sad it's going to be to see Goran go and seeing the reports that this is, you know, Goran could have played his last game for Slovenia, that he's not going to be with him for Eurobasket. And it's like, what, like, how do they play without him? That's one of my questions I have for that. Well, and to see the what? Oh, and he, he was huge in this game. He had 19, Luca, Luca finished with 21 points, uh, eight rebounds, 10 assists. He only had three turnovers. Um, Dragic had 19 and his 19 points were really big. He was a plus 17 in this game. Um, it's just, you know, he was just part of that onslaught. Mike Toby had 16 points, but he's basically just finishing stuff, you know, that Luca throws, throws up to him, which is fine. Him and, and Dragic throw up to him. Uh, and I think the and, Croatian game was in Ljubljana, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So. And, okay. and nobody else had double digit points. So on, on Slovenia besides those three guys. And so, yeah, it is a big question if he doesn't play. And he's upcoming. Like who? Where else do they get scoring from? I know this isn't like their full team. I know there's a couple of players that we remember from last year that didn't play. But in the comments, let me know if the um, if the new young kid. I'm excited about him. Now I'm gonna mispronounce his name, but VG. Yeah, I think it's Jan VG. I want to know if he's on this team. 
I don't know. So that's why I'm generally asking, but I've read a good amount of stuff about he's the next like Slovenian young kid star. And I'm really curious if he's on the team. Sorry. Yeah. Answer the question below. Who, where's the scoring going to come from? Because without Dragic, like they needed him in these two games for sure. Um, the next game you had um, was, was against uh, Sweden. And this one was, this one came down to the wire. It was 84 to 81. Slovenia ended up winning this game in the end. Uh, but Sweden really gave them a fight for sure. Same starting lineup for Slovenia. He came out and it was a tw- it was 15 to 5 Slovenia to start in the first like in the first 5 minutes. And Luka was hitting step backs. Um, you know, Sweden was just making some mistakes and you just can't make mistakes against Slovenia. It was like the same thing as the Croatia game. It was like almost the same start. Um, started out 15 to 5. And then all of a sudden, Sweden just sort of like shored up their defense a little bit. It's like they stopped the the the, the point of attack defense really uh, stepped up. And if you can stop the point of attack on Slovenia, then Dragic can't get to the hole, Luka can't get to the basket, and then all of a sudden you start slowing them down a little bit, and that helps them a lot. Get their offense stagnant, and then when their offense gets stagnant, their defense kind of gets can get lazy at times. Uh, and it's those- because Luka's overrated. <laughs> well, it's because it's the same way the maps play when Luca's on. The- Overrated. <laughs> we'll talk about that. So then, at the, in the first quarter, uh, they, he did start getting chance of overrated to, at the two minute and twenty second mark. Uh, right out of a timeout, Luca gets an and one after like Sweden had kind of come back, like gave him a little bit of a comeback on them. Luca gets an and one immediately. Had a response. He goes to the free throw line. Everybody starts chanting overrated, and then of course, there's the man. The man himself, Dirk Nowitzki, was sitting on the sideline with his kids. Uh, his wife is from Sweden, correct? Yes. His kids were wearing the Sweden yeah. shirts, and so I was, I was, I was remembering that. Yeah, she's Swedish because they play in Stockholm. Yeah, and, uh, and so he was there, and he was chanting "overrated" at Luca with everybody, and obviously laughing about it, and having fun. And it was, it was super great. Um, but yeah. Yes, sir. That's what but you do. The- <laughs> the best moment was after the game. The clip oh, comes the Dirk, out. The Luca and oh. Dirk moment. Oh, so good. It, and the funniest part of this whole clip is, you know, Luca comes running down the hallway, greets him. Mass fans just like this has made our whole offseason. Okay. Yeah. And see their, you know, the hugs, the genuine the relationships. But as they're like, they embrace the hug, big smile. They're like leaving from the embrace. And Luca's going from like hugging Dirk to shaking hands with Jessica. And you look at Dirk's hand. He literally reaches to grab Luca's pooch, his stomach. And he's like grabbing his stomach like, hey, your your belly there. And I'm like <laughs> laughing so hard. I'm like, oh, my gosh. This feels like my grandma every time I see her. Have you put on weight? Ha- have you? And, you know, Dirk's just like grabbing his belly, which is hilarious. Well, the great part about that whole thing was that um, Luca was like sneaking up to try and like like catch Dirk off guard and like he went up and grabbed his leg like he was going to pick him up and like just the whole playfulness of their relationship. It just gives me so much life. <laughs> and, and Dirk didn't have to be there, right? Like to my knowledge, no, he didn't have any so. like business, you know, thing that he, he had to be he there. Is for, on the, he is on the board of like FIBA basketball though, right? Like he is part of that whole thing. Oh, okay, but- never mind. Let's just say that he didn't have to be there. He probably (laughs) still didn't have, like, even so, like, he probably didn't have to be there front row and all that. Um, Yeah. So it was great. It was great to see that. Uh, Maybe even if he was rooting for Sweden, like, (laughs) like, who knows? He knows they don't have a chance. I know, but he has to go home and his wife is Swedish. (laughs) They, They did advance, though. And like we said, like, this next round for them is really important because it's in August. Then they have another round in November that he's going to miss. And then there's yeah. the February. Like, so the November round and the February round, they, he's going to miss both of those. So it, it kind of adds this more pressure of the August one. You know, that's right before Eurobasket. Huge. So he's going to get the game against Estonia and then he's going to get the game against Germany. And those are going to be like must win games for Luca and Slovenia. And that Germany one could be a lot of fun. Like, does Dirk, you know, come to that one? That'd be great. I mean, did. I don't know if y'all seen Dennis Schroeder's line that he put up the other day. He put up like 37 and 10 and seven or something in their game. You know, they have a couple more guys on their team, but that should be a a fun game. I'll, I'll try to tune in for that one. The rest of this Sweden game though. um, So the Mavericks are God, (laughs) Slovenia had a, (laughs) Slovenia had a really good Mavs man there. They had a really good start. Uh, they made it, Sweden made it a five point game at the end of the first quarter and Slovenia scored 12 points in the first four minutes of the, of this game 
They scored 17 minutes, 17 points in the next 12 minutes of the game. So it was like they just their offense just really slowed down, just really, really slowed down. They only had uh, 41 at the half. It was tied at 41, which is ironic because Dirk was was sitting there courtside. But it, it 41 tied at 41 at the half, and it kind of went back and forth, back and forth in the third quarter. Uh, at the beginning of the fourth quarter, there's the clip of Luca doing the YMCA on, on the bench. Like he doesn't care. Slovenia is only up by nine, and he's like. YMCA like <laughs> doing the dance. Brunson's leaving. YMCA. <laughs> Didn't sign Dragic. YMCA. <laughs> uh, all that stuff. And then it came down to this crazy finish, this crazy ending that I kind of want to go through. Um, I'll just start at like the, the three minute mark. Um, Sweden had this this center, Bergengender. Biergender. It's like wow. just a great name. Just a great name that every time the announcer said it, it made me smile. Bergender. <laughs> great name. Tied at 77 with three minutes left to go. Uh, Dragic was isoed out on this center, the Swedish center, and had him, like had him off of his feet and everything. Dragic launches this cross-court pass to Luka that gets completely picked off. Luka blocks the transition layup, but they call it a foul. Luka gets mad and all that. Sweden goes up by two at that point. Uh, they hadn't had a lead in a while, and they get it. They get a lead with like just about two minutes left. Zoran Dragic hits a huge three. That was massive. Um, Toby, Mike Toby, gets called for an off-ball foul. That's weird. And then all of a sudden, um, like oh, uh, Slovenia was already over the limit at that point. They had fouled a bunch early in the quarters. So they were over the limit. That's a big deal in this. And so they took the lead back. And then uh, at a minute thirty. This was like this huge long possession where Slovenia gets a bad shot, offensive rebound, Dragic gets a drive, and he lays it in over a Swedish player and really probably should have got called for an offensive foul here. They didn't call it, didn't call anything. And Slovenia's up by one. They come back to the other end, they get a stop, and then they essentially get a shot clock violation where Luca has to kind of save the ball from out of bounds and he throws it out and then they miss the shot. Timeout is called at 30 seconds. Slovenia, Sweden then is only down by one. There's 30 seconds left. They're inbounding the ball. Sweden inbounds the ball, and it gets tipped. So the ball is bouncing all around. Bodies are just flying everywhere trying to get this ball. Uh, this guy, Ludwig Hawkinson, who had been like Sweden's whole offense. I think he had 24 points. He's the best player. 24 points. Uh, gets a wide open three. If he hits this, then they're up by two at that point. It would have been a huge, huge basket. He misses it. Luca gets the rebound, and you think, okay, it's done. He's just going to dribble it out, or he's just going to go down and get fouled. Instead, he tries to chuck the ball ahead of him, and it gets picked off again. <laughs> and they go back to uh, Larson, number nine, the Sweden player. He gets a wide open three. He misses it. Slovenia then calls a timeout. Dragic hits the two free throws on the other end, and it ends up en ending, and Slovenia gets the win. But wild, wild endings. A great finish for Slovenia. We're excited to watch these games. We talked about all of what it means in FIBA. Uh, so we're excited. Check back to – subscribe to the channel. If you're not, we will we will follow all these games and everything. And, uh, guys, yeah, thanks for listening to Locked on Slovenia. Peace out. <laughs> Boom.